The North Dakota Secretary of State tells me although your ballot application has to have some sort of residential address on it, your ballot itself can be mailed to a P.O. box. It was last November that I stood right here with a last update in this case. Isaac's lawyers were asking for large amounts of evidence to be thrown out ahead of the trial. In other words, you can't just go online and search for dark websites like you would an online clothing shop. I'm Renee Cooper. I'm a journalist, truth seeker, and a lover of ethics. In the newsroom, I'm the go-to MMJ for investigations, breaking news, and anything that requires a creative touch. Union strong! I have a keen eye behind the camera and the charisma to work equally as well in front of one. Let me show you what I've been working on lately. In July, I pitched an investigative story that I worked on for months alongside daily storytelling. In December, I turned it into a week-long series, diving into the history of the correction system on tribal lands in North Dakota and unraveling the complex web of barriers that leaves cases unsolved and victims with nowhere to turn. I began where crime first meets the justice system, with police. And on tribal lands, which law enforcement agency takes charge can be messy. And you can ask just about every one of the 15 people I interviewed on this project, and they'll tell you the same thing. The solution should be sovereignty. In other words, the ability to prosecute anyone who commits a crime on tribal land. But as was made clear in the months I spent searching for answers, that won't come easy. COVID-19 ravaged the world this year. It was up to journalists to find the stories that matter most to locals in a sea of information. I traveled across western North Dakota, covering the devastation felt by family ranchers disappointed in coronavirus assistance released by the USDA after several heartbreaking years. And I found out that because of the pandemic, public health officials began sharing patients' names, addresses, and birth dates with police. Couldn't officers just be extra cautious around everybody? Yeah, I mean, that would be our, our guidance, honestly, is, is there's a risk everywhere you go. What's being done to kind of make sure that those first responders aren't passing that information along further, that it's not getting spread? Is there any sort of punishment if that happens? Actually, yeah, there is. And, of course, the many complications of contact tracing. The state of North Dakota has about 200 people that spend their days on the phone. <laughs> calling people who have just tested positive for the coronavirus. When a contact tracer calls you, they have two goals. One, to find out as much information about your case as possible and to see how you might be doing. And two, to find out who you've come into contact with recently to trace the spread. What I can tell you is there is a small landfill north of the capital city, just north of Bismarck. It is on fire currently, and you guys can just see that is the source back right there. I drove up uh, the road off uh, 110th and saw huge clouds of black smoke and originally had thought my house is on fire. And I told my wife to go inside, lock everything up. Seven landowners met with me to air grievances building for well over a decade. They all live right around here. The farthest still within a mile of commercial landfill, DB Waste. A cause of the fire has not been determined. The Bismarck Rural Fire Chief says no controlled burns were called in that day and they're not allowed on the property anyway. I'm worried about the public health, not just of us, people in this little neighborhood. You saw where that smoke plume went, it went. To town. Tires are a big part of what fills this landfill. According to the EPA, tires in stockpiles that catch on fire are difficult to put out, sometimes burning for months, generating unhealthy smoke and toxic oils. Meanwhile, there's another layer to these homeowners' frustration. 25 flat tires in a year. The uh, tire place said it's the only time that they've lost money on road hazard insurance. <laughs> From debris, correct? From debris. Okay. Nails, screws, pieces of metal. What was that coming from? Trucks going in here, the haulers. This debris was collected from quarter mile walks this homeowner took over the course of a month or so. They spent almost a million dollars paving up here. 149. And promises were made the truckers were going to use that. 
-hmm. And all DB waste would have to do, put a sign right there, to come out of the landfill, left turn only. Yeah. Barr says he instructs his drivers to stay off of these gravel roads and use the assigned route. But ultimately, he says there's only so much he can control. These homeowners are left with several questions and a whole lot of frustration. I covered a variety of other topics over the last year requiring an investigative eye. From the looming opioid crisis growing by the month in the upper Midwest to landowners and tribal nations fighting the state for millions of dollars in mineral rights from oil extraction, one of the state's leading industries. To a deep dive into the dark web and the black market drug trade in North Dakota. The special agent in charge for the DEA Omaha division flew into Bismarck to sit down for an interview with me. Do we keep statistics at all on on drug cases that lead back to the dark web, I imagine? Um, it wouldn't be hard to probably pull those statistics, but right now, no, we don't. Thank you, be seated, please. As the crime reporter, I also spent a good bit of my time in the courtroom. In 2019, I covered a quadruple homicide as an MMJ. And then there's the election. Local printers are noticing a big chunk of expected income missing this year possibly 20 to 30 percent. Printers look forward to the election cycle, and they've never looked forward to it more than this year. With the pandemic, our local printers and statewide, I, I don't know exactly, but I'm guessing they're running at about 50 to 60 percent. The District 47 representative owned quality printing in the capital city for 40 years before selling just last year. He tells me the governor opted to send money out of state this year to print his political mailers. Not only surprised me, but it really frustrated me, in all honesty. Representative George Kaiser isn't the only printer fed up. A couple of other Western North Dakota print shop managers wanted to remain anonymous, but they told me they've known about this as well, and it's, quote, kind of a crappy deal. They have an obligation to keep this work in state. Although these local printers knew for sure they weren't getting the business, it took a little more digging to find out who was instead. In the upper right-hand corner, there's a postal permit number on each of these mailers. The ones in question all have the number 897 stamped on them. And although they were mailed from a Bismarck address, a representative with the U.S. Postal Service confirmed the number traces back to Taylor Communications, a printing service in Fridley, Minnesota. The 897 tracking number appears in support of other candidates and initiatives, including the re-election of State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Kirsten Baszler, and this vote no to Measure 1 mailer, all of which were paid for by either Governor Burgum's campaign or the Dakota Leadership PAC, a political action campaign the governor is the top donor to, to the tune of almost $3 million this year. This so shows you where his priorities are. You know, he's inconsistent. Although Democratic candidate for governor Shelley Lenz did not send out mailers, she says this truck was wrapped by a Dickinson printing company. She says only local businesses were included in her campaign. Here in North Dakota, our towns work on kind of relationships and trust. I am committed to North Dakota. He is not. The governor declined an interview, but his campaign manager had this to say, quote, Governor Burgum has built a campaign team that combines talented local staff and vendors, including for printing with nationally recognized and regional firms. But at the end of the day, local printers are feeling left out. This is just not right. Uh, and hopefully it never happens again. Reporting for KX News in the capital city, Renee Cooper. You're watching KX News at 10 with Renee Cooper. I've also produced and anchored all weekend shows for the past two years. And in my first year in the industry, I won a first place Eric Severide Award for broadcast writing. My ability to adapt and learn on the fly makes me fit in wherever I'm needed. And I'm guaranteed to be the hardest worker in the room. All of this, I'm ready to bring to your newsroom. I'm Renee Cooper, let's talk.